Um, she is the drummer. I actually, let me just really fast. I got a press release where I heard of this band a few years ago. They were like pro queer, pro Palestinian, pro this. I was like, wow, this is one of the only real punk bands left. Um, and she is the drummer of that band called the Shondas. Uh, so not punk, and that's what this is about. Uh, really not. Um, but I'm a fraud, and somehow people believe me when I drum. Um, so there are countless reasons why I just might be the least punk person who has ever lived, despite my proximity in high school to a thriving DC punk scene. These include, but are not limited to, the following five. Number five, the only punk show I went to in high school was a D-Generation show at the 930 Club. I followed the band into their red and black tour bus and had Jesse Mellon sign my Weezer t-shirt. That's not true. At the time, none of this embarrassed me at all. Number four, growing up I had a little bit of a crush on Paul Anka. Number three, during the phase I would deem my life's punkest, I learned how to dye my hair from a sleepy Orthodox Jewish pothead who instructed me to boil Kool-Aid and to stick my hair directly into the scalding water while it was scalding. Worse was the fact that I took her advice and singed off half my hair, the remaining half of which was like a sickly chartreuse. Number two, my favorite film at one point was Legends of the Fall. <laughs> Mind you, elsewhere in the world, Riot Girl was happening, John Waters was like making crybaby, but I was too busy pining for loincloth, back to nature Brad Pitt to even notice. <laughs> and the number one reason I'm a total hack when it comes to punk cred is that I have, in fact, over the course of my life, in all genuineness, asked the question, who is Joey Ramone? <laughs> <laughs> and yet somehow here I am, the drummer in a punk band, a hack at best, a fraud at worst. I feign punk literacy to the best of my abilities. I'm something of an accomplished hustler at this point. But when it comes to Because the Night, I'll always take the 10,000 Maniacs version over the Patti Smith version. So there you have it, my flaccid punk backbone. The one place I did not slack when it came to punk was pursuing hot punk people. I was admittedly kind of a fetishizing punk chaser. It was an ill-fated profession for an Orthodox Jewish teenager, not to mention being the least punk thing I could possibly be doing, besides listening to Matthew Sweet on repeat, which I was also doing. <laughs> My particular fetish was a punk aesthetic that was approximately two rungs in quality above, like a hot topic. Once I tracked a queer punk lady with a killer back tattoo via several desperate Craigslist misconnections, it did not work. And there was also the time I decided to go stag to a semi-militant vegan crust punk potluck at the University of Maryland Food Co-op because of my designs on this guy named Cyrus who managed to have like four septum rings and still breathe. I wore my thrifted Crest t-shirt. I did not know who Crest were. And I brought egg salad. Needless to say, the vegans were not it. Or me. But then there was Max. A nice Jewish boy. I met him one night at a zine swap to which, thank God, I brought no egg salad. <laughs> Max was an actual punk who I could actually talk to. And I can thank him for planting in me the revelation that punk is really an energy thing, an ethic, a politic. And it wasn't just because he made me several dozen mixtapes and mostly only ate bread and avocados and distrusted dining tables and wore lots of zippers. No, it was because Max took me to see Fugazi at Fort Reno. Oh. It was transcendent. And admittedly, at that point, I had never heard of Fugazi and I tried to listen you know, in preparation for my first real punk date and immediately had to turn off the stuff and put on some Buddy Holly as like a palate cleanser. <laughs> show, I realized that Fugazi, much like beer or coffee, and punk really, was kind of an acquired taste for me back then. I just had to warm up to it, to stick it out. By the end of the show, I was like orgasmically elated despite myself. I had worked myself into a punk frenzy and it had not been calculated. And while Max was busy stalking Ian MacKay after the last song, I was nursing a rock and roll high that's thankfully still going to this very day. Thank you. Woo!